very exciting, everybody. I'd like to welcome you all to our webinar today. This is, once again, is Art Manville. I have a fantastic webinar lined up today, and we're very excited to have Dr. J. Frederick Templeman on the line with us. Uh, Dr. Templeman is a primary care physician, board certified in both Canada and the U.S., with over 20 years of clinical experience. What's interesting is Dr. T. entered medical school at 36 had previously had a successful career in the Canadian Diplomatic Corps, so obviously made a big life-changing move there uh, and worked a lot with Canadian foreign aid projects. Since becoming a physician, Dr. Templeman has led groups of students and medical volunteers back to areas where he has previously posted and to other locations. He enjoys writing. Of course, he's written a lot of great books and, and, and has a lot of materials that we'll be talking about a bit later on the mango scene. He's a board member of several research companies and a pioneering member of nutritional intervention and standard medical care. He's a father of 10 and uh, resides in Utah with his wife, Michelle. And before I bring Dr. Templeman, you know, Dr. Templeman, I just wanted to say something to you as a Zango distributor, um, how grateful that we are to have you a part of Zango and the role that you played. Uh, you know, it's really easy now with all of the uh, people that have used the mango scene, but back before there was a company, uh, you were the pioneer. You were the one that uh, that was supporting mango scene, that was doing some of the original research before the company was ever launched. And it was, uh, I believe, your credibility and uh, and your getting behind this product that has allowed all of us that are on the phone to be here today. Uh, for the thousands of people that have gotten results from the mangosteen to the distributors who have created life-changing incomes and added incomes. I believe your support and, and, and uh, for this company and for the mangosteen uh, before it was ever launched was absolutely integral, integral to that, so I'd really like to personally thank you uh, for all of that. Well, Art, thank you very much. You can't see it, but I'm blushing. You're very gracious. <laughs> Well, I was really thinking about this on my deck last night, you know, and how much we really owe you because it's it's really easy now, you know, to go ahead and talk about Mangosteen, but before anybody would ever heard about it, there you were. And uh, so we really appreciate that. Well, thank you. You know, let's start in with just, you know, some questions that I've got and some slides here. And we're going to kind of, just to let people know, we're going to kind of run through the three different products today. Most of the time will be spent on the Mangosteen and the 365, but I also know... Uh, Dr. Templeman has some key uh, con uh, uh, comments to make on Glimpse, and so we're going to talk a little bit about that at the end here. But, you know, the first question I wanted to ask him really is, you know, why Mangosteen? I mean, what is it about Mangosteen? Well, <clears throat> the Mangosteen is remarkable for a number of different reasons, but uh, I, I think back to my own situation as a family doctor. Uh, I was trying at my best, like most doctors do, to do everything that I could uh, to help my patients. But as we know, there are shortfalls uh, very often with uh, the uh, problems uh, that that uh, the inherent problems that come along with uh, medicines and and drugs. And uh, there were many times, because I've been trained to use only drugs, that I found that I just didn't have what it took to help people. And I uh, began to enlarge the circle of things that I would suggest as interventions and began to use nutritional interventions. And as you know, the mangosteen has centuries of folk medicine results. And these were not just in one country, but in many countries in the Far East. And I, uh, when I started to look at uh, a lot of different things, was struck by the breadth of the Mangosteen's applications. The fact that it was used, and I've been since then back in the jungles uh, of uh, Thailand, close to the Cambodian border on two occasions now, once for two weeks, once for 10 days, uh, following little practitioners who use nothing but herbal medicine, and for whom the Mangosteen was a Mainstay. We used to use it to look after infected wounds. I saw him using it for dysentery and problems with the gut. Obviously, that had an anti-inflammatory element to it. Uh, I talked with the monks who had uh, been responsible for keeping the history of the mangosteen for 600 years, at least in a written form in Sanskrit. I talked with the monk who has control of that manuscript. He would not, of course, allow me or anyone who was a non-initiate to see it, but I did see the actual book. 
and uh, wow. it is an integral part of uh, the Buddhist uh, tradition to help their people in any way they can, so there's both a spiritual and a physical aspect to the healing that the mangosteen brings. Right, and uh, and so basically you've seen a long history of use, and, you know, somebody said to me, uh, you know, the... You know, all of those years of experience with this product around the world is one of the greatest sort of validations that you could possibly have. Hundreds of years of use. Yes, I, our, people talk about randomized controlled uh, trials as being the gold standard to try and determine truth about efficacy and uh, function and safety. But let me tell you that uh, every drug that ever came out, including the one in seven that get withdrawn for complications that are unacceptable, side effects, uh, they had at least two of those randomized controlled trials done. And obviously they didn't pick up the major problems in advance. Uh, the history of millions of people using this product certainly trumps the kind of science that we could submit it to today if we were looking at it with drug science. And uh, going back to the actual fruit itself, the reason why I was struck with it is the breadth of uh, the phytochemicals which are so valuable to the body uh, that are found in it. Now, we know about the xanthones, and we'll talk about those in a minute, but proanthocyanidins, these are the things that people uh, uh, have heard about as pycnogenol uh, extracts from grape skins and uh, grape seeds, uh, but also there are catechins. In fact, this plant by weight is 25 percent catechin and this is exactly the same phytochemicals that are found in green tea so that by taking uh, two ounces three times a day of mangosteen juice in the form that you guys use uh, you would be getting the equivalent of about two plus cups of green tea every day for your catechins but polysaccharides are there and we know that uh, the polysaccharides are the major ingredient in things like the Golgi berry they're also the major ingredient in aloe vera and we have them and there are thousands of them uh, sterols these are the kinds of plant lipids or fats that uh, everyone is supplementing with well they're natural in this plant and because they're in the actual fruit uh, you get it in your drink and fiber of course it's not strictly a phytonutrient but nonetheless it's important yeah you know and this is so powerful because the people are wondering you know well what is it about Zango or the mangosteen juice that is different from all the other products out there and uh, and, and basically what you're saying is we have a lot of the same uh, phytochemicals in our juice in, our, in the mangosteen or found within the mangosteen as you could find in all of these other hot products that are out there, if you will. Uh, but of course, the, what is, makes our uh, preparation different is none of the other ones have xanthones. Is that correct? That's correct. Xanthones are unique to the mangosteen. They are a very important uh, class of uh, polyphenolic biochemicals that uh, are used by the body in many, many different ways and found only in this plant. Uh, the difference is that the mangosteen has all of these ingredients put together by Mother Nature or God, however you wish to think about it. Uh, you'll find lots of products on the market where people have uh, usually... I would think uh, people who are in marketing have put together a number of things, and uh, there's one product out there that has 18 different things in it. Uh, all or any of them would be important if they could be found in serious concentrations, but unfortunately they're not, and so really what it is is a name game, and, and people are selling something on the face of, uh, on the force of uh, bud, uh, buzzwords, and uh, really the mangosteen just doesn't need that kind of hype. Yeah, and before we get into a little bit more on, on the xanthones and the mangosteen, I just wanted to direct people to your website, mangosteenmd.com, and uh, we, this, is the, this is the front of it here. There's lots of information. Uh, uh, Dr. Templeman goes through the science, the history. Uh, there's also um, uh, the bios on all of the four basic doctors that are part of your, really, your, your research group, right? That's correct, and um, many of you will be familiar with Dr. Uh, Dr. Morton or Dr. Posang or Dr. Johnson as they continue to travel. 
Um, these doctors, by the way, continue to use the mangosteen in their practice as nutritional interventions, but we're no longer alone. <laughs> Originally, it was like the Four Musketeers, uh, but as time has passed on, we now have literally hundreds of doctors, and I can't think of a single uh, subspecialty where I couldn't name three or four doctors who use this and understand the value uh, for their patients in uh, nutritional interventions. Yeah, and so uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you is just a simple question. You know, what is it so is so great about the mangosteen? And, and I guess uh, we can't really talk about the mangosteen without, and what's so great about it, without discussing silent inflammation and inflammation. And this is something that I had basically no awareness before getting involved with this, and, and it's hardly uh, a month goes by that there isn't more and more research coming out talking about inflammation and how it either causes or at least exasperates, if you will, or makes worse many different conditions in the body. Yes, absolutely. And you can see a list on this slide on the right-hand side of the kinds of diseases that have been linked directly to inflammation as a cause. Now, uh, we this is relatively new information. It's less than 10 years old in the medical field, and uh, it has changed the way we look at so many diseases. For example, uh, there was a time when we used to think that the major cause for heart attacks and strokes uh, was excessive cholesterol. We now understand that while cholesterol is a contributing factor to heart disease, uh, cardiac problems uh, of the nature that we've been treating with bypasses, etc., ineffectually, by the way, uh, is really uh, a product of inflammation and that cholesterol is less important than the idea of developing inflammation in those plaques of cholesterol which line our uh, circulatory system. So that, that's a, a case where we We've literally spun around 90 degrees and are looking at this disease in a very different way. Hence, the uh, medical interventions are different, uh, but interestingly, the nutritional interventions are no different. But because we know and understand uh, the tremendous uh, value of some of the phytochemicals, particularly the xanthones, as anti-inflammatory agents, uh, we realize that we can address the idea of generalized and chronic inflammation because inflammation is not a bad thing when right. it's acute or short-lived, but it is when it becomes chronic, and we can address that with the mangosteen uh, much more safely than with medicines and probably, arguably, more effectively. Yeah, I mean, this is a great picture here um, that really shows, you know, uh, from an article on Newsweek about how inflammation can, uh, can cause heart disease and actually shows some pretty interesting pictures there that we can see. Yes, uh, it, it really has been necessary for doctors to sort of stretch their meninges and look at things in a different way when we're talking about etiology or the cause of disease. Uh, many of the things that we had taken for granted uh, just haven't proven to be true over time when we apply some of the more recent uh, epidemiological evidence that has been brought to bear. Yeah, you know, and of course... Uh, we talk a lot, and, and, and I know you, you've used the word before, that it's, it's, quite, it's not as sexy sort of to talk about prevention as it is about, you know, sort of trying to treat some sort of a disease. But it, to me, this whole explanation on inflammation and how this chronic inflammation it can, can really uh, cause a lot of diseases is, is the greatest uh, sort of reason, if, if, there are, if there isn't any others, for taking this for prevention before all of these things start to hit home. Well, absolutely, and some of Dr. Johnson's studies uh, prove this to be a very practical way of, of looking after inflammation. Uh, we, we talk about a nutritional intervention here. We're not talking about drugs. We're not talking about curing, but we are talking about arming the body and the immune system of the body and the other systems which are brought to bear to keep us safe and healthy uh, by giving them everything that they require to, uh, to perform that task, and certainly uh, the mangosteen and nutritional interventions have a very legitimate place. Yeah, and, and you basically have said before that, you know, that, uh, that prevention is really where we should be putting a lot of our focus and really educating people about taking care of their health, not waiting, you know, until something goes wrong to start thinking about your health. 
Well, Art, when you look at the diseases which kill Americans, and it isn't the same all over the world, thank goodness, but in our country, lifestyle diseases, chronic illnesses such as uh, heart and circulatory problems, strokes, and cancer, and, and when we talk about cancer and nutrition and nutritional interventions, uh, it's very clear that a third of cancer deaths at least the experts believe that one-third of all the people, that'd be over 170,000 people a year, would survive uh, if they just ate differently. And so chronic inflammation as a result of the way we live leaves right. us in a situation where we have disease processes progressing in our body. You don't feel the plaque building up in yeah. your arteries. And it goes on for decades before the very first appreciable sign that the individual knows is going on uh, it breaks through. And then you go in and you find out that you're, you're not at mile one in the disease. You're at mile nine. And really the disease takes you out about mile 11. So it's extremely important that we eat better, that we eat with a uh, point of trying to consume uh, both foods that are beneficial and to supplement our diets. And uh, uh, heaven knows that the American diet is uh, deficient. Take, for example, a simple thing like mag uh, magnesium. We're going to be talking about that later. But 60% of the American population uh, in good studies has been shown to be deficient in mangosteen. And, and something as simple as vitamin D, you would think that uh, we wouldn't have deficiencies in vitamin D because, in fact, many of our foods are fortified. But 40% of the American population in recent studies has been proven to be deficient in vitamin D. So we really do not only need to eat well, but we do need to supplement. Yeah, I know. And one of the things that comes to mind as I hear you talking about how long the disease process um, can, can, can take in the body, you know, things that we are not aware of. Uh, and then, of course, people take some kind of intervention like a mangosteen juice and expect you know, within 30 days that all of those uh, things are going to be reversed. I mean, so people really need to focus in on giving these interventions, especially with the mangosteen juice, time to, to rebalance the body and let the body come back into healing itself. Right. I, Art, I sometimes use an allegory to help explain that. When the Blitz was going on during the Second World War and German uh, aircraft were coming across London and dropping just uh, plane loads of bombs all over the place, uh, the Brits didn't run out the very next day after the bombing had stopped or it was a temporary interval and begin to build their buildings again. Uh, when you've had chronic disease present in your body for a long time, uh, it's similar to a bombed out city where you have to clean up the rubble. You wow. have to get rid of the junk and then you can begin to restructure and to rebuild. And the body is not different. Toxins are the end result of uh, taking in a lot of things that we never should have had in our bodies, and detoxification uh, at the body's pace is uh, a slow process, and the rebuilding that is necessary after that happens. And so it reminds me of a guy I, I had as a patient. He was a farmer, sat on his tractor or in his truck most of the time, very sedentary, had a big belly and uh, came in to talk to me about his heart disease, and I told him about changing his diet. I said, look, you need to start eating some green things, more vegetables, not so much meat. And uh, I saw him three months later. We redid his cholesterol, absolutely no change. And I said to him, Jack, what's the matter? I, I explained to you that you had to change what you ate in order to make yourself uh, – have a better chance against this disease. And he said, Doc, I ate salads for a whole week, didn't notice a bit of difference. <laughs> and, and that's kind of the way it is sometimes when people begin to use nutritional interventions like the mangosteen, they kind of hope for overnight results. And the, you know what's confounding is that, and, and makes it possible for them to believe this, is that there are some things that do respond virtually overnight to a proper nutritional intervention, and mangosteen certainly does that in cases of certain kinds of pain, uh, with right. energy, et cetera. And so because those changes come quickly, uh, there is a presupposition, erroneously, that all changes will take place with the same kind of rapidity, and they just don't. Yeah, and and I and I have actually uh, I heard one uh, a natural physician talk about the fact that the body will actually heal its its different um, concerns and its own agenda. You know, it may you may notice something in one particular area. It wasn't your primary concern, but that might come along later as well. 
Yes, people do notice that. Now, that's, that's an interesting thing you raise because everybody knows that the father of Western medicine, Hippocrates, uh, said first do no harm when he was issuing his instructions to fellow physicians. What they do not know, and which is in my mind more important, is that he taught respect the body's ability to heal itself. And really, truthfully, right. no matter what we do as doctors or what we do as patients, all we are doing is assisting the body, which must, with its own powers, uh, resolve the problems that we may have created for it. Yes, very well put. And uh, just before we get into some of the other questions I've got, um, I'm bringing up a slide here on sick care versus health care. And I know I've heard you talk hilariously in some cases about uh, drugs and some of their side effects and why it just makes sense that if possible, not always, but if possible, that a natural product should be the first choice. Well, you know, natural products go along with the idea of living uh, a healthful life. And the medicines go along hand in hand with the idea of trying to intervene in a situation that's already extreme. And because they are extreme products, there is no such thing as a safe drug. Now, I'm not suggesting nobody take drugs. I'm not suggesting that no one go to doctors. In fact, I have a doctor. I go there, and he writes me a prescription for high blood pressure because the natural products that I used for blood pressure that would make a difference for me dropped my blood pressure into my shoes, and that was an excessive amount, and I couldn't regulate it. So I have, I have a medication that I use for my blood pressure. And uh, drugs are useful, uh, but they are extremely dangerous. And the idea that we could possibly be advertising them over the television the way we do automobiles or other consumer goods just makes my bile rise because that is highly irresponsible as far as I'm concerned. We're out there uh, extolling the benefits of drugs, and then in a very quick little voice in the background, they will tell you about all the potential adverse reactions. And it's true that when you take the 186,000 people who die each year, and now that was from 1997, there may be more now, but that was a study done by the Institute of Health uh, way back in 1997, 2,300,000 thousand people were admitted to the hospital because something had gone wrong with the drugs that they were taking. It wasn't that they weren't doing it right. They were taking them exactly as prescribed, and that many people were hospitalized, and 186,000 died. And so it's, uh, well, actually 108,000 died, and those others are the mistakes of drugs in hospital. But a serious cause of death, something that we shouldn't take calmly and understand that you can and have to treat disease when it appears, but you're better off to treat it before it appears. You know, I heard you say something that I thought was so powerful, and, and you said basically that, uh, that uh, we should think of our doctors as consultants, you know, that we consult uh, to, and, and which means we need to take total responsibility for our own health and then look for help from others rather than just turning our health over to somebody else. You know, uh, in the past, Art, that theory of, uh, I mean, that, pr that way of proceeding, of allowing your doctor to pretty much run things, may have been necessary, but not in our age. On the Internet today, in layperson terms, is as much information as anybody might want or need regarding the various diseases that they need to watch out for. And if you're looking for what diseases you need to be on the alert for, you simply look back in your genealogy. What happened to your dad, to your mom, to your older siblings, to your aunts, to your uncles? That'll give you a genetic point of view and let you know what you are liable for. For. Take right. a look in your neighborhood at what people are getting, and you know what you're, you're up against, and you need to watch uh, for that. So we have all of the information we need. And, uh, I, you know, there was a time in my life when I gave a sizable amount of money over to someone to manage for me, and I ended up with no money at all. And uh, money's one thing, but health you can't get back. And so you don't pass your health over to anyone. Too often I know of men who sort of uh, allow their wives to be the one who worry about their prostates. And uh, I think that the men should be aware of the fact that this is a very serious health concern and concern themselves about it. Get information and manage. Consult with your doctors, but make the decisions yourself. Yeah, very well put. Thanks for educating us on that. You know, one of the biggest questions, and, 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 I, and we could actually have turned this call in 
to a question and answer about this disease, that disease, you know, and umpteen different variations of all the different diseases. And to me, I think there's an answer, uh, you know, perhaps for all diseases. So the question that, that we really uh, I'm asking here is, you know, how do we respond when people ask, will it help for this particular condition? Will it help for that particular condition? How would you address that? Well, you know, medicine has come through uh, a fair amount of, I'm talking about formal allopathic medicine now, it's come through a kind of an evolution. It's constantly changing. And right now, because of the kind of scientific advantages that we have that we didn't have uh, 20 years ago, we're now talking about, quote, personalized medicine. In other words, we're not just treating somebody with X disease uh, because it proved to be helpful in someone else with X disease. We now look at the uh, genomic, the actual uh, makeup genetically of the individual involved, and we try and tailor the actual medical regimen as tightly as we possibly can to the individual. Now, right. we're certainly not there, but really when you talk about natural products such as the mangosteen, you want to know, will it help me? The idea is simply that you're going to be giving the mangosteen to your body so that all of those phytochemicals which are in there that have biological utility will be available to the body and the body will use it as it wishes differently in each individual. And so really the only answer to that question is you need to try it. Give it a reasonable try. In other words, take as much as would be reasonable. Use it for a period of time that's likely to give your body a chance to see whether these are the nuts and bolts that it needs to perform the functions that it must uh, face. And watch and wait. Uh, you cannot predict accurately. Uh, certainly doctors can't do it with all the science they have at their disposition, and we can't do it when we're talking about nutritional interventions either. You do, a, you do your best to try and find what's so valuable out there in the supplement market, and then you take it and you try it for a reasonable time and a reasonable quantity, and you'll get your own answer. Okay, yeah, I think that's great advice, and, and just for those that are listening, some people are new, I mean, what is a reasonable time and what is a reasonable quantity? Well, we're talking about chronic disease. Remember, we used the illustration of a city being bombed out and having to clear up the rubble, etc. cetera. Uh, that's not going to happen in a day. It isn't going to happen in a week. It isn't going to happen in a month. It's going to take a reasonable baseline would be three months. And using it, uh, giving it to your body in dosage intervals that will allow the body to maximize the amount of nutrients that it can pull from there, which would be three times a day. And I would suggest for anyone attempting to uh, look after chronic illness, something that's already there, but a couple of ounces would be, mini would be the minimum amount. And if you're simply looking to maintain uh, and uh, prevent disease and you feel you're in pretty good health, then as little as an ounce a day would be worthwhile. Right. And, uh, and so what do you, uh, you – so actually the more serious the condition, the more you need to take, basically. Absolutely. I used to believe that when people were, when their bodies were up against something as terrible as cancer, uh, that uh, they might be able to get away with only a small amount. We now know from experience that there is no upper limit when you're facing challenges like that. Yeah, really. And I mean, you know, I mean, we've heard, you know, a half a bottle a day, a bottle a day. The fact of the matter is that it's a natural product, so there is no upper limit. And um, take as much as you possibly can, I guess. Yes, and you can do that safely. I've, I've heard it recommended out there sometimes that horrendous amounts of water be taken yeah. with it, and I understand the idea of using distilled water because it's a better uh, solvent than, uh, than ordinary purified water. So I do recommend that people use distilled water. But you do need to be careful when you're taking large amounts of fluid because diseases uh, don't uh, usually exist only by themselves. So if someone has cancer, uh, they may well indeed have kidney disease or heart disease. And then you have to watch the amount of fluids that the body can manage. And uh, in some cases as well, drinking enormous amounts of fluids can wash out some of the important electrolytes in our body and uh, get us into problems that way. So so uh, as much as you can of the juice and a reasonable amount of distilled water would be what I would recommend when you're facing the kinds of challenges where your body's going to need the phytochemicals present uh, in the mangosteen in as large a quantity as they can get. 
Well, this is fantastic, and I could, uh, you know, I could go on and on with more and more questions, but I really know you have some education for us on 365, the new whole food nutrition, and, uh, and so why don't uh, we go through a couple of the slides on 365, what you like about it, and, uh, and give us some education on why whole food nutrition. Okay. Uh, if people have pens and pencils, this may be the time to pick them up if you want, because we are going to be talking a little bit differently now about ingredients in uh, food and supplements than we have than I have in the past. Uh, when we were talking about the mangosteen, I would use an overall arching picture of, of just uh, nutritional intervention. But now we're going to start talking about some absolute... Uh, details that do matter and I'm going to give you some definitions so we can start and you'll have a point of reference when when you hear me talk first of all nutrients is a term that you hear a great deal of when you're talking about anything that has to do with health and nutrients are substances which are necessary for life which the body must obtain from food or from supplements. Now, we have what are called macronutrients, and people don't often think of them this way, but when you hear the category carbohydrate, that's a category of macronutrient. When you hear fats, that is, or lipids, that is a category of macronutrient and proteins. These are macronutrients that we need to eat in relatively large quantities, probably not as many as we do in the United States where we have a problem with obesity, but those are the macronutrients. And then, of course, within our food and within the supplementation that we may choose to take, we talk about micronutrients. And primarily, these micronutrients are vitamins and minerals. And remember, they're called nutrients because they are essential for life. They're not something which is optional. Just let me say a, a, a little bit of, about the word essential. When you see the word essential, as you do when you're talking about essential amino acids or essential fatty acids, we're talking about substances which are necessary for health, not necessarily for only life, but necessary for health, which the body cannot manufacture on its own. Now, for example, there are many, many proteins that the body can manufacture on its own from amino acids, but there are some amino acids that the body cannot manufacture or make, and they are essential when you're going to be making uh, the, the proteins that your body requires. Now, the only place that you will see the term essential, that you would go away from what I've suggested and not regard it as having to do with something the body can't make, is when you hear about essential oils. The word essential in essential oils has nothing to do with the body. It has to do with the fact that these oils are extracted from something called essences that are taken from plants and uh, the body has no essential oils uh, that it must bring in like it does have essential amino acids and essential fatty acids. So be familiar with the term essential. Now, a vitamin. A definition of a vitamin that would be workable is that a vitamin is an organic compound. Now, when you see the word organic, what you're talking about is the presence of carbon within that compound. So it's an organic compound that is required as a nutrient, in other words, necessary for life, by the body in tiny amounts. Right. We don't require large amounts of, of vitamins, relatively speaking, very small. Minerals. Now, these are elements which are found in the Earth's crust, and they are used by the body for many different jobs. For example, you can't make hormones if you don't have the minerals that are necessary. You cannot build bone without the minerals which are the building blocks of bone. You cannot regulate heartbeat or regulate muscle contraction or regulate uh, neuronal discharges without the minerals uh, that are required to do that. Now, these minerals don't, I mean, I'm not suggesting anybody go out with a knife and fork and start uh, digging in their, in their uh, garden and eating right. the dirt. That's not, that's not what I mean. These minerals come to us largely because they have been processed by plants into a form that we can use. And uh, we get it from eating those plants directly, and we may get it indirectly from eating the animals which have eaten the plants. So that definition 
uh, would be the way we should think about minerals. Now, there are a couple of categories in the mineral uh, classification that matter. There are what we call macro minerals, and usually we don't call them macro, we just say minerals, and then we differentiate those from others by calling the others trace minerals. And the macro minerals, that means those that are need, required in a fairly significant amount, greater than 100 milligrams per day, so that these macro minerals, we need them from our diet or supplements in greater than 100 milligrams per day, and they are calcium and phosphorus, and people sometimes think that calcium is only necessary in bones and in teeth, but calcium is required for neuronal discharge and also for uh, making muscles work, and virtually every cell that is a muscle requires calcium in, a, in an absolutely precise amount. Magnesium, and I told you again that the American population was 60% of us were uh, had less magnesium in our body than we required. Now, sodium, uh, which can be found in salt, sodium chloride, uh, is another one of these macro minerals, and it usually isn't in short supply. In fact, we may take too much of it. Potassium and chloride, as well as sulfur, are the macro minerals, and then everything else is. Uh, as you can see in the uh, slides that we're going to look at, those are trace minerals. Some of them are uh, essential and others are not. Now, when we look at the uh, Zango 365 nutritional breakdown, we see that we have a lot of vitamins. And, and when you look at those vitamins and those minerals that are in the, the actual product itself and compare the fact that they are split into a morning and into an evening dose, you'll see that most of the time we stay fairly close to the RDA, the recommended daily uh, allowance. And the fact is that this is a pretty good uh, way of measuring things. Uh, there have been standards and people have argued that we needed far more than the RDAs, uh, but the truth of the matter is that that's a fairly reasonable way to go and probably safer than simply taking macro doses of everything. Uh, we know that the, the fat-soluble vitamins, and that would be A and D and E and vitamin K, that they are able to accumulate in our body and uh, that there are actually problems that uh, come from too many of these vitamins. We tend to think that water-soluble vitamins are washed out and that we don't have any problems with them, but the truth is that one of the water-soluble vitamin Bs, thiamine, can uh, be stored for up to three years in the liver. So you need to take in on a daily basis the small amount that you require for your body to be able to do everything that it requires, and you don't need huge, huge doses. You need reasonable doses. Now, I in the brochure, I go through all of these particular classes of vitamins and talk about what they are, are uh, used for uh, by the body and how they, they work, and I'll, I'll just allude to a little bit of that. Um, did, I ever, did I ever tell you, Art, that uh, at one point in time at the beginning of the, uh, the 20th century, back about 1912 and through to 1930, that they gradually had so many vitamins uh, that they had them that went all the way up to U, vitamin U? Uh, well, I think I might have heard you mention that once, yeah. Yeah, I, th I think I said it from stage when we yeah. were in Orlando. But we went up to vitamin U, and interestingly, they had a vitamin P, and they also had a vitamin PP. But uh, over <laughs> time, they began to categorize the vitamins. They found that a lot of them belonged in other categories of biochemicals uh, rather than in the vitamin category, and they whittled it down to the 13 that we commonly call vitamins today. And when you look at the B category, for example, you'll see that we have B12. Well, you would assume, reasonably, that if we have B12, we have a B9, we have a B11, et cetera, but we don't. Uh, the the uh, B12 is the last one in a group of eight B vitamins. There used to be many more, and they took them down. Now, you might ask, how come there are so many, quote, B vitamins? Well, vitamins are not categorized by their molecular formulas. In other words, they're not categorized as an A, a B, a C, a D, because of the way they look or the way they are structured. Really? They cat Go ahead. Really? I mean, you know, I would have thought that's exactly how they were categorized. Well, 
That's because we categorize everything else that way. We categorize the phytochemicals, xanthones, that way, and, and uh, catechins and everything else, but we do not do that with vitamins. Vitamins are categorized according to their function. So, for example, there isn't a single vitamin A. There are several substances belonging to a category of, uh, of uh, molecules called carotenoids, right. and there are others called retinoids, and they all belong to the vitamin A category. When you take a look at vitamin E, standardly when you go out to a store and buy one off the shelf, you will get alpha tocopherol, but there's also a beta and other, there's four at least categories of vitamin E, and you don't get those when you just buy something off the shelf, but with uh, 365 as a product, for example, you get all of those vitamin E's. And, you know, that, you know that's a, this is to me, I think you're making an incredible case for, for why whole food nutrition, really. I mean, this is a very complicated uh, subject matter, and and to think that uh, that some, this could somehow be re re reproduced in a laboratory with all of these little variations, it, it, to me, it sounds impossible. They absolutely cannot. When you take a look at these 12 fruits and 12 vegetables, I've had some people say, well, gosh, Dr. Templer, I think it's only a couple of fairly large capsules holding all this in. How could you get enough to make a difference? But the truth is that this is freeze-dried. And the elements, the, the phytochemicals that you're looking for, and remember, we're going to make a distinction here between a nutrient and a phytochemical. A vitamin is a nutrient. The minerals that we've listed are nutrients, or most of them. Uh, some are phytochemicals, however, meaning chemicals coming from, from plants, and these are not nutrients. The, the catechins are not nutrients. Right. Uh, the xanthones are not nutrients. They are phytochemicals that the body uses in similar ways to the vitamins and minerals, but they are not. Now, they work best, and this is why I've always been high on the mangosteen preparation that you use, I've always been high on the idea because they work best when they are in the network of nutrients and phytochemicals that exist only in whole foods. So that when you're going to take the plum in, for example, you're not taking in it for any single uh, reason. You're not taking in because it happens to be the, the best uh, uh, plant that you can eat or fruit that you can eat uh, for uh, antioxidant effect amongst the listed ones, uh, but you're taking it in because it has a network of nutrients and phytochemicals that work best synergistically and additively, and that's why you see the tremendous epidemiological, by that I mean by looking at populations, large populations, and drawing scientific conclusions based on your observations of large numbers of people. That's called epidemiological observation. And when you look at the epidemiological uh, evidence, it becomes very apparent that people who eat certain whole foods in a significant amounts uh, just don't have the same uh, number of diseases or the severity of diseases of those of us who don't. And so all of these foods are there. They're in freeze-dried form, but they're there with everything that is valuable in it Everything is whole, just like the mangosteen is used in its complete form. Uh, all of these broccoli, by the way, which is a cruciferous vegetable, particularly useful for the phytonutrients that affect the circulatory system and the heart. And in my brochure, I talk about all of the advantages of whole foods, and I give you all of the, uh, the elements that tell you how the vitamins work in your body as well. Yeah, uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, what you're talking about, Dr. Templeman, is uh, you've got some uh, support materials for us on 365 that includes a uh, brochure. This is really going to be sort of a whole food nutrition brochure and CD, is that right? Well, actually, the, the CD and the brochure are the same title. The title is 
vitamin and mineral supplements, why bother? And uh, But they, they are separate. What I talk about in the CD is complementary to the kinds of charts and information that you will see in the brochure. So they're slightly different. You can say some things when you're chatting very easily, and other things must be laid out visually in charts. And so both of those will be available, I would expect, from Mangosteen Tools by the end of next week. Okay. The reason that we're a bit slow in getting it out is that I, I have not been able to talk specifically about 365. Now, here's what I can say about 365. I use it. I have my choice of any product on the market. I understand and uh, I'm familiar with a lot of them, but I have chosen to use this. And so that's uh, what I've been telling people for years and years. The mangosteen juice is not an adequate source of vitamins and minerals, and they needed from day one to be taking a multi, excuse me, a multivitamin and mineral preparation along with the juice. And now we have something which dovetails with the juice and which works synergistically with the phytochemicals in the juice to such an extent that this is a completely adequate supplemental regimen. I would not recommend that anybody rush out and uh, start taking a lot of other supplements in addition to these. Yeah, this gives you basically what you need, and we've seen such phenomenal results with the with the juice alone. I'm really excited to see that when new people that are just coming in, uh, that they get both of these products and go on them together. That'll be absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we'll right. see a lot more results, wouldn't you think, in, in different ways? Yes, we will, and, and here's what I would hope happens with the company. I certainly don't dictate to them, but they are looking at the cutting edge, and uh, as it becomes necessary to uh, add or take uh, take moments to uh, take, excuse me, take action to improve things, they're certainly going to do it. And uh, times change, things advance, and you can be comfortable, at least I am, that the Zango company will may remain at the cutting edge of things, and anything that's out there that's useful or good, they'll have in their products. You know, just a couple of random questions here before we talk a little bit about Glimpse. You know, people are wondering whether they can, uh, when they should take uh, the 365, or, or, you know, is it safe for pregnant women? Uh, is there too much iron in it? Things like that. I mean, do you have any... Any cautions or comments on, on, on that? Well, the, the iron issue is something that has come up, and as you note, there's a relatively small amount of iron in there. And I think that you, you may see that there will be uh, other uh, steps with regard to iron for those people that are concerned. The products that are there for prostate, now let, let me just make a suggestion that may make some people bristle, but I'm going to make the suggestion anyway. The products that are there in the male formulation for uh, and the male formulation does not have iron those products that are there for the prostate are general nutritional products that have extraordinary uh, uh, advantages as far as antioxidation are concerned if menopausal women are concerned about the very small amount of iron that is present in the formulation for women uh, they can easily take the male product and they're not going to grow a prostate in their armpit. They don't need to be worried about anything like that. What they're getting is a dose of, of uh, very useful uh, phytonutrients and uh, phytochemicals for their body uh, without uh, necessarily being restricted only to the prostate. So that, that's important. Uh, that's the only concern that I've heard expressed. Uh, other than that, I don't think anybody needs to worry at all. This is a, this is a cutting edge product. It's as good or better than than anything that's out there that you would uh, find, and it's priced right. Yeah, it's a very good value, and uh, basically, it's convenient. And I think we'll get a, you know a lot more people taking their vitamins and and getting their nutrition in with something that's so convenient. They don't have to open up bottles, and they can put it in their pocket, and they can take it traveling and. And so it's a really good way to get it in the body. Uh, Dr. Right. Templeman, uh, let's talk a little bit about Glimpse. Um, I wouldn't have thought that, you, that, uh, that we would be talking about Glimpse, but I, I was talking to someone who attended the 200K trip, and he told me you were very excited about this, uh, this new product that Zang will be coming out with, a skin nutrition line in, uh, in November at convention. 
Yeah, uh, now let me say one last thing about uh, the, the vitamins and uh, the preparation in 365. The whole foods are there so that you don't have to take this with food. When you take this, because of those whole food capsules, it is as if you were taking it in with a meal to, uh, to uh, maximize the absorption of the elements that are there. Yeah. Now, the skin care is exciting. As far as I'm concerned, uh, now, and I must admit to you, frankly, I have been involved only at one point in the past with uh, significant dermatological uh, products, but this is nutrition for the skin. I remember talking with Beverly, who is the architect of this, and, and uh, we discussed, and I said, well, it really sounds like beauty's the byproduct, and it truly is the byproduct. It's going to make a tremendous difference, and I'm lucky enough along with some of the people in the VIP program, to have had these products available for use in my home. Now, I have to fight my daughter who comes over occasionally and tries to right. whisk away my vials, uh, but my wife and I have been using it. Now, I used to live in places where there was a great deal of moisture in the air, and when I moved out here to Utah, this is a very dry environment. And when I come back from the Far East, for example, or when I've been down on the East Coast for a bit, and I come back here, it is so dry that my nose will bleed the first night or so that I get here because the mucous membranes are just not used to having that much moisture pulled out of them. And I noticed that there was a tremendous amount of roughness on my cheeks as a result of living out here in a dry climate. And I tried using a number of different things to moisturize and to keep the water in my skin. And the best thing that I ever found was plain old Vaseline. But you can imagine the drawbacks to having your cheeks covered with Vaseline during the day and during the night. And I wasn't able to find anything that really worked well. Well, let me tell you, I've been using one of the moisturizers with the uh, the Glimpse product and uh, the mangosteen elements that are in there, and I do not have dry skin on my cheeks. Now, that might not mean a lot to, to other people. And I, believe me, I could put this stuff on four inches thick, and I'd never be beautiful. But <laughs> well, I think you're looking better all the time, Dr. T. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but the fact is that you need nutrition for your skin. Your skin needs protection from the elements, particularly from the sun. And most importantly, in my mind, it needs that kind of protection without dangerous elements present in what you're using to protect your skin. And there's a little book out there that I would recommend uh, to everyone if they wanted to read that. It's going to help them understand the importance of Glimpse. Uh, it's called Not Just a Pretty Face. So write that down, Not Just a Pretty Face. And when you read that, it's going to frighten the living daylights out of you because you will go into your bathroom, take a look at the body products that you use, whether we're talking shampoo or whether we're talking makeup or whether we're talking skin creams, and you'll take a look at the ingredient list and you will find in all of those products, some of the things which have horrific effects upon the body and which are mentioned in that. So the glimpse was very exciting to me, not because necessarily of what it had in it, although it's got some tremendous stuff in it, but there's a no-no list, and you've got it right up here, of things that should not be in any form and in any preparation that is used for nutrition of the skin. And yet it's all over the place in the products that are out there. You have to hunt and pick and get very, very uh, expensive products if you're going to try and find something that is clean of all of these offending elements. Well, Glimpse is clean. And here's another really exciting stuff about a uh, piece of information about it that really gets me going. And that is that it is cold processed. Now, what does that mean? It means that we're taking the mangosteen, which has, in addition to all of the things that we've talked about it, which are preserved when you heat something, you have many, many enzymes. These are proteins that are easily broken down, and they are destroyed. And so in the juice, there are no enzymes that are active. They've all been denatured by the processing. But when you use Glimpse, all of those mangosteen enzymes are there because it's completely clean. It is uh, cold processed, 
and it, it can meet the requirements of the term green. Uh, nobody can meet the requirements of the term organic, uh, but it does meet, it's clean, it's green, and it's cold processed, and therefore has elements in it that no one has been able to get from the mangosteen yet uh, in the forms that are available on the market. So I, I really think it's going to be exciting. Beauty will be the bright product, uh, but really it continues on with the theme of nutrition, but this time not only from the inside, but from the outside. I've, I've told uh, Bev that I believe that, that Glimpse is going to start where nature stops because nature doesn't do a whole lot from the outside for the skin, and Glimpse certainly will. Well, I'd like you to comment. I've heard a couple of your comments. Uh, one, I heard you say something like... Uh, you know, that, that you think um, Glimpse is going to be, and you've kind of already talked about this, but the quote that I heard was that it'll be just as famous for what's not in it as what's in it. Yes. Uh, you see the no-no list that's up there on the board. They're yeah. all very important elements that shouldn't be in the products that we put on our skin. And the fact is that none of those are there. Now, here's another very interesting thing that I know that Bev is preparing to do when we, when we launch. She's willing to take her group of experts, and if you have loyalty, and many people do, to a particular product line that they may have been using and selected after much uh, examination of the products on the market, if you've got that kind of loyalty, send in the, when we launch, send in the name of your product line, and you will see that they will put a head-to-head -head comparison between Glimpse and the product line to which you are loyal, and you'll be able to see the advantages of Glimpse directly and specifically set out against what you're already using. Yeah, this is going to be fantastic, and uh, and they have such a great team that's putting this thing together. I think the other thing, I mean, uh, I mean, did you actually say that you thought that Glimpse had the potential to to, to really sort of uh, outsell the juice, <laughs> Doctor T? I did. I mean, the fact is. Uh, the juice is very, very important, and we have emotional attachment to it, but the market for the nutrition of the skin is larger. Uh, it's an established market. We're moving into it in a privileged position. Uh, we have the excitement about mangosteen generally, and, and this is a mangosteen-based, the only mangosteen-based element that's there, and so it, it's going to be a good. Now, do you mind yanking that off the screen right away, Art, and stop, don't put any more of those up because that's that stuff I sent you by accident, and you're not supposed to see that, all right? Uh, I apologize. Are you there? Okay, I just got uh, Mangosteen MD up here now because it's time yeah, to pretty well. <laughs> Thank you very much because I sent that to you by accident. Um, burn it right after the uh, right after the <laughs> the webinar. Yeah, what we've got up here are our four old tried and true faces. Oh, we didn't say anything about Dr. Johnson's uh, CRP studies, did we? Yes, right. Let's do that a little bit before we close it out. Okay. Well, CRP, uh, highly sensitive CRP, is used by many doctors, uh, those who are on the cutting edge, of taking a look at the generalized inflammation in the body, which may have direct effect to cardiac events in the future. And Dr. Johnson had a series of patients, uh, I think the last time I looked, he had something like 48 patients that had abnormal CRPs, in other words, had an increased risk for cardiac events. And uh, by giving them just a couple of ounces of Zango a day, uh, he was able to have that reduced uh, back to normal or significant drops in it with that single intervention. And that's very striking. And certainly, I think that that's what brought Dr. Johnson onto the team was his effect at seeing that. And I'm sure glad he's here. Yeah, fantastic job. And uh, Dr. Templeman, uh, you know, we've been using all of your tools for a long period of time. Uh, certainly the X Factor CD has been a classic. Uh, Nature's Magic Wand that we've been recommending for a long time. Also, uh, down here on the screen, you'll see Mangosteen, the X Factor, uh, a great book that documents all of the science, and that's a great one to get into the health practitioner's hands. A lot of health practitioners like to read. They're used to studying things. They, they want to see all the references. Uh, that's a very powerful thing. You've got this new uh, Xanthone study. We didn't talk about that. Um, and uh, then you've got some other uh, tools and stuff, all available as a link from mangosteenmd.com, right? That's correct. 
And we welcome you all there. And if you've got uh, suggestions for us, pass them on. We'll uh, try and be as responsive as we can. And when I mean suggestions, how can we fix the website? How can we make it more useful? And also, what tools do you think you need? Yeah, and uh, I really appreciate you coming on, Dr. Templeman, and just really covering all the bases on these three incredible products. I really appreciate you and all that you bring to to our team here and, uh, and uh, all that you give and the travel that you do and the research that you've done. Once again, I want to thank you for that and, uh, and uh, just really acknowledge you because, as I said before, you're one of the pioneers here, and without the pioneers, there might not be anything happening right now. Well, pioneers, you, uh, Art and Terry, are pioneers as well. I have never seen anyone, and uh, everyone knows how successful you are. The evidence is that we've got over 500 people on this line this morning. But you're pioneers in the use of the Internet. You're on the cutting edge. I've never seen anyone do it better. And I, and I heard that same compliment from Chris Peterson, and he's the other guy who's the expert yeah. in the Internet. Okay, well, thanks a lot, Dr. Templeman. And what I'd like to do here, I know it's going to be noisy, everybody, but I'd really just like to open the lines up to where you can just kind of give a cheer to Dr. Templeman here um, and, and thank him for all of his work and efforts on all of our behalf. Thank you. Thank you.